Hi everyone, I'm in my bedroom right now, thinking of turning this room into a Balinese style bedroom with a relaxing mini fountain pond. A few months ago, I attempted to do makeover of this room and I started painting the walls, but I got caught up by so many other things and it has been left like this until now. But today, finally, I determined to push through my unfinished projects. The walls used to be two-tone, cream and light brown, as you can see here. I didn't like these colors, to me they looked kind of dirty and gloomy, so I changed it to plain white. I know some people don't like white walls, but I like it, because white makes the room look bigger and clean. Also, if the wall gets dirty by accident, I can just paint over it easily, because white paint is usually available at any shop. The main furniture in this room is the bed and the dresser. This dresser is Balinese in style and all the other furniture are also similar dark brown. So I decided to give this room a Balinese theme. I decided to remove the blinds because I don't think these fit into the Balinese theme and they don't look so homey. I am thinking of changing them to neutral colored curtains. Talking about the color palettes, I chose an orangish brown as a base color and brown variations plus black and white. Also, I want to accept some green as plants. I filled the screw holes with multipurpose filler. This door is a bit damaged at the bottom. Luckily, there is another door over there which is on that wall that we are planning to remove at some stage. So I took the damaged door off and I'm gonna replace with the other door later. The previous owner used weird paint on the frames. It doesn't take normal paint well, so I decided to use laminate primer first because it usually has stronger bonding agents than normal primer. Then I coat it with gloss white paint. Lighting is very important as it affects the mood of the whole room. My ceiling lights were a cool white which was not a cozy color. Using the tallest furniture which was this big Balinese dresser to reach the ceiling lights. I changed the color setting of ceiling lights. I was tossing up between neutral white and warm white, but I ended up picking warm white as my color code was warm color. After I painted the window frame, I installed the curtain rods. I bought those plain natural beige curtains from Bunnings Warehouse. I chose them because the color is warm shaded neutral color and they are not eyelet style. They have loops on the back and I think they look better than eyelet curtains for this room because the eyelet looks more urban than natural. I decided to move our bed to the window side. I know it's an unusual layout, however, I wanted to enjoy watching movies at night. Facing to the biggest wall is the perfect direction to achieve my movie night plan. But gosh, it was so heavy. Somehow I managed to do it by my own, but it was really hard. I wish we had extra space to move some furniture outside of the bedroom while I'm working, but we don't. Working on the area where we are actually living is always a bit more challenging. To make it a little easier, I decided to reduce my stuff. 
Oh, I highly recommend decluttering regularly. If you don't have lots of stuff, organizing the items is a lot easier and you don't need to deal with them like playing Tetris. Anyway, adding stuff is always easy to do, so reducing the clutter is definitely the key. This is my bookshelf. I have been using it for a long time, but I thought I should change it to a cabinet by adding the doors so that I can hide unpresentable stuff inside. So let's do it. I measure the shelf to start with and cut out the wooden bars. Then I sanded edges to smooth in the corners. I wanted to have some patterns on the doors, so I searched some designs of Balinese furniture and I found this one. I would love to have something like that on my new cabinet doors. I sketched the design on the board with a pencil. I used my plates and cups for drawing circles. Then I started carving with my little drill. Actually, this is to do acrylic nails, but it worked well. I also used a carving knife for straight lines. When I was getting used to this drill, I changed the drill bit to the bigger one to work faster but I dropped my favorite drill bit under the porch by accident. I looked for it everywhere under the porch, but unfortunately I had no luck. I gave up searching for my drill bit and borrowed my husband's one, which he uses for metal work. It worked very well. To finish it off, I lightly sanded to smooth the edges. Finally, the carving job is all done. Before installing the doors on the shelf, I checked my other Balinese cabinet to see how the hinges were attached and tried to do the same thing. Firstly, I recessed the side of the board for the hinges, but I noticed a big problem. My doors should have been made along with the direction of the wood grains, otherwise it makes the job so much harder. Somehow I managed to take small pieces out of the board. I filed to shape the edges. And I drilled holes for the handles. My doors are all done. To attach the doors on the shelf, I marked the screw holes and screwed the hinges on the door first and measured where the door hinges would go on the shelf. Then put the doors in place and screw them. I decided to attach a strip of wood as a door stopper inside of the shelf. I had to add a piece of wood strip to cover the gap between the doors. Then I painted the doors with walnut brown stain. I was going to stop here, but I decided to make it washed white. I think it's boring to have all furniture in the same color, especially when they are all dark colors. I like to have a bit of variation. So I painted over with cream colored chalk paint. I sanded to achieve distressed look, but it looked too distressed and pinkish which I wasn't planning to have. I painted over again with white chalk paint this time. Then I carefully sanded all over again to define the pattern I carved. I'm so glad that I changed the color. I finished with clear matte coating. I applied it twice. Lastly, I attached the magnet closures to the back of the doors.
Yay! Finally, I transformed my bookshelf into a cabinet. It was certainly a challenging project, but I'm so pleased with my new cabinet. Let's move on to the bedside area. I have my favorite bright Epson projector. It's nice to watch movies at night. I need to have a proper spot for it. So I decided to make a shelf and attach it on the wall for my projector. I designed a thick shelf to be able to hold any heavy object. Buying a shelf is easier, but making it from scratch allows me to customize the design. I decided to add some carving patterns on the shelf to match my new cabinet design. I did the same process of painting, walnut brown first and white chalk paint, then sanding. I like floating shelves, but I think my projector is little too big to be on the floating shelf and I really don't want it to fall, so I decided to use brackets. I even doubled them to make sure it's definitely safe. I painted the bracket with white paint same as the wall. I was going to buy screw hole covers, but I couldn't find a good products. Instead, I just stick the white round stickers to cover the holes. I covered the electrical cord to hide it. Okay, now it's time to make things to add to the room. I got this quaint wooden decor from my sister-in-law. As you can see, it is damaged a bit because it's been sitting outside for a long time. I washed it thoroughly and decided to get rid of loose paint first. Then I painted with brown acrylic paint. I didn't like this silver color because it looked cheap, so I covered it with brown paint. I think it turned well. I finished with clear matte coat. On this side of the wall, I want to have my family photos because they bring me joy. I bought lots of photo frames from op shops. They were only $2 each. As I was planning to make a gallery wall, I lay them on the floor to organize the layout first. I wanted my photos to be printed in sepia shade so that they would fit well into the color scheme. I always use Photobee to edit my photos. This is a great online editor. It's free and it works like Adobe Photoshop. Open the photo of my choice, then adjust the colors. I lower the saturation first and change the color balance, increasing red, decreasing green and blue. That usually brings the photo in the sepia shade. I want to show you my favorite technique to make it look more interesting. I choose an airbrush tool and set it the largest size and hardness is zero. Choose your key color and play with the blend mode. Lower the opacity and flow. Then airbrush on the photo. I like to use color dots for highlighting and color burn for shading. That brings vibrancy into the photo. Then export the image into JPEG so I can print it at any shop. Before I hang the photos on the wall, I cut out papers that are the same size as the frames. I use a free magazine. Stick them on the wall to check the positioning.
Once I'm happy with the position, using them as a guise, I started attaching the hooks on the wall. For the left side of the wall, I wanted to have some art matching with the color of my bed. I painted a feather first without thinking much about it, but I didn't like it. Then I changed the design, but I still didn't like it. I changed it so many times, but nothing made me feel right, and eventually I got too confused. So I decided to try the marble pattern, just picking the colors from my color palette. I simply poured the runny paint of each color in the container one by one, then flipped over on the canvas, and then let the paint slide on. Then look what happened! This is very good. I like the random pattern. I added a bit of bronze paint and let it slide again to cover the corner. Then it's done with the least amount of effort. I got an amazing piece that looks like Jupiter or something. These are our bedside lamps. I love those Himalayan salt lamps. They are so peaceful and beautiful, but they melt and leave the salt crystals on the table and damage it. I don't like to keep the lamp turned on all the time to avoid it. So I decided to move them to the dining room and place them on the plates. Then I got these new lamps from Kmart for this room. I like the round shape of the stand, but I didn't like the color. I think it was too light for a Balinese interior. I started to paint them with dark brown acrylic paint. They didn't take the first layer of the paint well, but second layer set well. I think this color looks much nicer for a Balinese theme. I must have some plants in my room. Not only do they bring a peaceful atmosphere, but I enjoy seeing them grow. I never got bored to see my plants because they always show different phase and sometimes surprise. My husband always leaves his deodorant cans on the dresser. Instead of changing the place, I put them into this basket so that it's still easy enough for him to do it. This is just a weed from my garden, but it looks good and it's hardy. And this beautiful selenite tower lamp is from my friend. I like to have my personal things that have good memories and bring me joy, rather than having perfectly matching decor. In the end of the day, I am the one spend time in this space, so having what makes me happy is more important. Not all of the decor I added does not align with Balinese style, but they certainly have a soul attached to them. I've been looking for a big mirror, and I found this Balinese mirror from Marketplace. According to Feng Shui, the position of the mirror shouldn't be facing to your bed. This is simply because you could be frightened to see yourself in the mirror when you wake up in the middle of the night. That makes sense. I wanted a mirror in this room as I get dressed here every morning. I decided to place it here by the dresser because their colors are matching and we can't see it from our bed. Now let's change the bedding. We were using two individual single duvets so that we didn't need to fight for it. But two duvets on one bed never looked good. I bought a new set of bedding and cushions from Kmart. 
The sheets that I picked is a warm beige and it's 100% cotton. My husband sweats a lot and it turns yellow in no time, so this is a great color. The bed takes the biggest area of the room, so changing the bedding certainly changed the impression of this room. As it dominates the interior, I chose the key colors from the palette. For our quilt cover, I like to have a bit of texture. This is king size. Our bed is queen size, but my husband often rolls up the duvet while he is sleeping, so I decided to extend the size this time. Hopefully, this solves the problem. Finally, it's time to make the signature piece for this room. I always wanted a peaceful water feature in my bedroom because I think the sound of water is soothing. This beautiful white bedside table is again from Marketplace. It will be the stand for my mini fountain pond. I like to find the furniture from Marketplace. To match with the other furniture, I decided to distress the white paint by sanding. Then I coat it with clear matte varnish. I use a large bowl from Bunnings Warehouse to create the mini pond. Then I glued two ceramic plant spots to make fountain stand. And install a small pump in it. I place some river stones. added the dechlorinated water in the bowl and arranged the plants. I've already made a detailed video about this mini fountain pond. I put the video link in the description box below so if you want to know how I set up this mini pond, please check the instruction video. This is the final touch. I released four male guppies in my mini pond. Oh, my bedroom is finally done. Okay, I'll show you around. Remember, this is how it used to look like. And this is my new bedroom. We can watch movies or I spread my yoga mat on this area and do my yoga practice. I love listening to the sound of water and it's so peaceful to have swimming fish in my room. I'm so happy that finally made a depressing room into a relaxing space. Hope you enjoyed my unique DIY bedroom makeover. Thank you for watching this video. Love you all. Bye!